the Retirement Cafe podcast, episode 38, Finding True Freedom in Retirement with George Kinder. Retired or thinking about retirement? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast. In each episode, we bring you an important conversation with insight, tips and knowledge, all designed to help you live a fulfilling and successful life in retirement. Here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner and Accredited Later Life Advisor, Justin King. So welcome to another episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast. And this time I'm joined by George Kinder. Now, George Kinder is a friend and he's a mentor and he's been a big teacher and very influential in my career and personal life. So um, welcome, George. Hey there, Justin. Good to be here. So George, for the people who may not know you, now obviously I know you very well, could you give a little introduction about who you are? And and by the way, where are you? (laughs) I live in London. I've, I've written a bunch of books and traveled the world, and I'm now uh, uh, a training financial advisors largely, which is how you and I met, and training, training them around these issues that you talk about a lot around retirement issues and and uh, and issues of uh, becoming free in in your life. But also, right now, I'm very excited because I'm I'm kind of on a world tour that's going to be going on for a year or two. Uh, with my new book, which you'll probably have an image of, but there it is. The yep, yep, the I've got it. <laughs> and the map of mindfulness. And I'm going, I'm going to four cities in Asia in the next few months. I'm going, uh, I'm really traveling. Well, I think there's 16 cities in the next uh, four or five months that I'll be visiting. And wow. then, and then uh, and it's going to go on from there. So I'm very excited about it. Fantastic. So, George, um, you know, you've had a career in training financial advisors. You know, what 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 skills are you training them in? Yeah, and and uh, th- this is interesting. I've, I've trained advisors from thirty different cu- countries on six continents, and I train them in something called life planning. And uh, there are different interpretations of what life planning is, but. I think the way you and I understand it, maybe you'd have an even better frame, I don't know, but the way, the way I think of it is that we, uh, I train advisors in listening skills so that the advisor becomes a great listener for their client. And as a consequence, they, have, um, they gain levels of trust that no other advisor can, can get because most advisors are busy selling products. And you and I know that that what we really want uh, from our advisor is someone who knows us and is going to inspire us to deliver with the money that we've got, the access to money, the work that we have to deliver us into the absolutely the most uh, thrilling uh, or most comfortable or most rich and meaningful life that we can have. So I train advisors in those listening skills and then in those inspirational skill sets so that their clients live what I call lives of freedom. They live, they live pa- much more passionately and much more engaged and they don't leave, they don't leave significant things on the table. They really no. make their life rich. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it, and to the clients who've gone through the process with me, you know, they've had, they've, they've, you know, it was, I've had some amazing conversations with people with, the, the, you know, the, the amazingly rich conversations with the things that are important to them. So, but we, you touched on there, um, this concept of freedom and, and, and in your, and in your in the latest book, you, you talk about that, you know, it, it's a theme that runs through the book. Tell me what freedom means to you. Great. So, so I think that there are multiple layers and multiple meanings in a way that I, um, that I think are really important for each of us to deal with and certainly for myself to deal with. Um, so I have, there's personal freedom that I have in the book and I want to talk about that in, in a moment, but I want to frame it by saying we live in a culture, we live in a Western culture, each of us, where that culture, the democracy in that culture is so supposed to be dedicated to our freedom and to various qualities or kinds of freedom, the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly, the freedom of uh, the press, uh, and the freedom to choose our representatives. So those freedoms are very important for us to feel and experience and express and engage in the world um, in in freedoms that are uh, 
in, in being free inside ourselves. So in the book, I relate both those qualities of freedom. And I hope, you know, I am in the center of London. You'll hear a jackhammer going off next to me. But that's <laughs> a thrill of civilization happening around you. They're making the street better. So, <laughs> so but I think you, you can hear it. And so for me personally then, um, I've come to a place where freedom, part of my freedom, is expressing, is, is speaking truth to power. So it means taking on the large institutions and saying, no, you're, you're not helping us with freedom there. But a deeper meaning of freedom for me comes out of the work that I know you do, uh, and that is the life planning work. It comes out of, the, I think there are two deep layers of freedom for me. One is to be passionately engaged in the world around the things that I, I would regret if I didn't fulfill in my life, the, the things that um, call to me, and it could be my kids, uh, it could be uh, creating another book, um, uh, but it, uh, there's a, a path that each of us is called to. And life planning is just an excellent methodology for arriving at what that path, that passionate path is of freedom. And then there's a, another layer of freedom for me, and, it, uh, and that is that uh, the internal freedom that we feel uh, moment by moment in life. So there's one freedom that's just exhilarated or, or feels that the circumstances of our life are just set the right way and we're on the right trajectory. Then there's this other quality of freedom that's really at peace, that is not driven by our anxieties or driven by our aversions or our hates. Um, it's, um, it's really learned to be, and this is very important for me, really learned to be at peace in the world, and so I feel, I feel that I experience many more moments in a day or in an hour or in a minute of life than I normally feel because I've really gone after that layer of freedom. How do I free myself from being driven by what everybody else thinks and what I used to think and what my family of origin told me I should think? How do I free myself of all of that as well, so all of that? Uh, you know that that this is crucial, I think, because you know I observe. Uh, you know we have. You know, uh, Kathy and I have two young children, as 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 you do, or you've got teenage children. I know George now, so it's slight. It's just a slightly ahead of ours. But as they're growing up, you know that they are relatively free, aren't they? And then they suddenly start to understand the constructs of actually, well, we've got to go to school, and we've got kind of rules around bedtime and getting up time and screen time and and all. <laughs> All the other kind of, and, and, and they suddenly arrive in this, they've suddenly gone from this toddler stage where relatively kind of free of constraints to, to kind of a, a, a world that we, we put them down a path. Yeah. And then, of course, the whole focus is on an education system and passing exams. And then, you know, often mums and dads will want, you know, let's get some good qualifications because you can go off to college or universities, or, um, depending on which side of the pond you're on. And then, uh, you know, and then we, we, we enter into a world of work. And I'm not sure at any point along that way, we've, uh, we, we've talked to that child that teenager that young adult that um that that adult of you know what would it be like to be free <laughs> um <laughs> how would that be you know uh, and what are you what would be your deep passion or yearning etc how do you um what do you, how do you think about that yeah i and it boy uh kids growing up it's complex it's a complex area because in in, in our work with adults we give them, I mean, one of the tools that we use is something called ideal day, ideal week, ideal year. I don't know if it's in, I'm sure it's in your toolkit. I don't know how much you use it. Yeah. Um, but when people play with that, you know, they design a, a life, uh, a, a day, a, a week, a year that uh, feels uh, free, freeing for them. And, uh, and then we encourage them to live as much in it as they possibly can. Um, I don't know if I do that with my teenage daughters completely because you know as as parents we've got a responsibility to see that they have all the skills that they need to excel out in life as adults so part of that schooling time uh is uh you know learning to be free within the context of you know the literature that they're studying the drama the music that they take 
uh, the mathematics that they learn, but part of it is learning all the skills, all the structures, so that in fact, they're able to navigate the world with much greater freedom as they come into adulthood. Yeah. So I think that's the complexity. And one of the things, one of the ways that I kind of, I, I mean, I try to educate my kids as much as possible toward, free, toward creativity. And so add creativity being an expression of freedom. But I, I also, I, I keep in mind all the time that the more they learn, the more expressive they're going to be. Mm. The more they're going to be able to navigate this very complex world that we find ourselves in without feeling driven uh, by, uh, uh, by the work and rather choosing the work that has more passion for them, more purpose. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think um, for our retired clients who often have got um, grandchildren, you know, observing, you know, their behavior, uh, you know, as, as they move through life is, um, is hugely important. Now, one of the other things that you touch on the book um, and, and I'm very passionate about as well is this kind of entrepreneurial spirit. And, and this is not just about entrepreneurial spirit of the classic, you know, I'm a shopkeeper, I think that, you know, or I'm a, I'm a, a self-employed person, et cetera, starting a business. This is the entrepreneurial spirit within you. And I, I, I feel that um, you feel possibly, you may, you may be able to correct me, that everyone has some entrepreneurial spirit within them. And I think that as retirees, get to that position in life where they've suddenly got a little bit more time. You know, they're not responsible possibly so much for the children, though, <laughs> though they, they, they tell me that never finishes. So, uh, <laughs> um, but they're not so responsible for the children possibly on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're also not responsible to going to, to work. Um, how do they find their entrepreneurial spirit at that point in time? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's similar to what, uh, you and I talk about, about life planning. I think that um, for me, my entrepreneurial spirit is kind of uh, discovered, is revealed when I do the three questions or when I look at um, the, uh, the ideal day, ideal week, ideal year, and I see that I'm not quite living where my passion is right at this moment. And then I go, wow, well, I got to do that. So, uh, so then I, I move toward where that, where that passion is. And I think that those three questions and the ideals, and then we've got other charts and exercises that I know you make accessible to your clients and no doubt in your podcasts as well, that, that those, uh, I, I revisit them several times a year. Yeah. Just, just to remind myself. And I think, um, one of the things that, um, uh, you know the, the the your third question, which is you know you you uh, you you're going to bed tonight and you're you know you're literally turning out the light and you're not waking up the next morning and who did you not get to be and what did you not get to do, you know uh, and as you know I had that kind of question I had a big you know when I was thirty I had a big motorbike accident and I and and you know dead at scene and resuscitated and lost my spleen and 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 was a pretty messed up in a hospital in Belgium and and you know that question in essence kind of because I did wake up I was like yeah I'm not sure I'm living my life in the way that I want to be so it, it very much re re resounded with me and I do think retirees have the opportunity I suppose because they're you know when I talk or listen carefully to uh, people in retirement. You know, they are they are very present with the idea that life, the end of life, is coming closer. It, it possibly not be, hopefully not be in the next you know twelve months or even that night, etc., or even the next ten years or twenty years. But they realise that they've re they've they've reached a different point of life now, and therefore they know that there is. You know, if you talk to a twenty-year-old, they have no idea of a limitation of life. <laughs> but if you talk to a if you talk to a retiree, they kind of get it. They kind of know that this is the the next stage. And then uh, getting or hoping people get to that perspective of okay, so what's truly fulfilling? What would truly what, what would truly matter? What would truly make this next twenty thirty year retirement be? fantastic now i know that's something that you've you've considered yourself you know well fairly regularly has has your life plan changed over the over the last few years you know it, it's 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 funny i i don't know how you've experienced it but i think for me the life plan is often very very similar when i do it three months six months a year later very very similar i've had two kind of stunning shifts 
uh, over the last 20 years. W one of them, and one gentle shift, one of them was suddenly, uh, there, uh, there was a passion, I, I had no idea where it came from, but in my third question, the city of London <laughs> arose. And here I am, you know, I'm an American and I live in Boston, I'd hardly ever been to London, and suddenly there was this passion to spend time in London. Well, one of the things I've learned is when a passion like that arises, you don't go, well, I'll do that when I retire, or I'll do that in a few years, or I'll get a vacation there. Man, I go for it when something comes up, uh, because I know that that will then be richly fulfilling right at that moment. And otherwise, you're holding back and those dreams are beginning to diminish. So that was one. One, the gradual one, and then I'll tell the other kind of urgent one, big one. The gradual one was um, I came to parenting very late. I mean, I my kids are 15, and I'm I'm well into the retirement era for myself. <laughs> so um, uh, so that has just been heartwarming, you know, that kind of loving, just being with them, and and of course now they're teenagers. <laughs> I don't know if I should love being with them because uh, they give me a lot of grief sometimes now. But it, you know, the fa family has just really risen for me in a very gentle and surprising way, a delightful way. Um, I always thought I was an artist and a mystic in some way and never really got the, uh, the family stuff. So that's been really rich. And then the thing that's come up for me in retirement, and it's something that, uh, you know, you, because you're talking to retirees a lot or to advisors who are working with retirees, and we all want to give back. And what I finally realized the reason that I wrote this book, The Golden Civilization, was that I saw that things were uh, fraught. They were difficult in our democracy. They were difficult in our economics. We just had gone through the banking crisis. And, and I thought, gosh, people shouldn't feel this miserable in life. And we should feel that we're in a system that is sustainable and trustworthy. And then the worries about the planet that are, are all over the world except in the very richest corporate segments in America, the, uh, the worries about the planet. And I thought, we, we shouldn't be playing dice, <laughs> you know, rolling the dice with the planet. And I thought, well, you know, I, I want to do something about this. And what I realized was that the work that you and I have done together, the work in life planning, could be applied to the planet, to our democracy, to the economy. And instead of uh, just applying it to ourselves, which is wonderful, that's great. I don't want to take anything away from that. But as a retired person, I want to give back my wisdom. And my wisdom says democracy is a great thing. Let's not blow it. The earth is a wonderful thing. Let's not ruin it. Uh, civilization is a, a rich thing. And all of our freedoms are rich and meant to be extended, not uh, compromised. And so I thought, well, how can I, as a very small individual, do something about that. And I realized I could write a book and then create a conversation that, that retirees could give to, in their communities all over the world. So that's one of the things I'm going into senior centers, into elders uh, communities and, uh, and teaching them how to give this, how to have this conversation. And what we call it is life planning civilization or golden right. civilization conversations. So that came up in my third question and now is, is very ripe there. I wanna do something so that the earth is a better place. Yeah, yeah. Forever, for all of our, as long as we live as a species. Inspiring, and I think um, you're absolutely right that the lots of retirees I talk to have, have this feeling that they want to now um, contribute and uh, have a lot to contribute, obviously, because they've got the wisdom gained up over 60, 70 years, and, and are, are freed often from the constraints of earning a living because they've saved well enough to, 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 um, to look after themselves and therefore not have to go to work, and then are suddenly looking for that bigger purpose. So, you know, what, what will bring meaning to my life? And, and what, I find, what I find inspiring about you, George, is that you, you're thinking in a bigger stage rather than just, you know, what would in, it, how can I really contribute to this planet and to this civilization that, that, that we've got around us. And, and I also picked up from the book that was that it doesn't have to be as big as that on an individual stage, but it, 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 it can be whatever, whatever is important to you. That's one of the beauties. The, uh, 
I've been um, helping people set up these conversations. The, the book is a resource. So the book uh, you know, that, that I've written has lots of ideas in it that are, that are uh, and, and, and whoever's listening, whoever's watching, you're gonna disagree with some of them, you know, because some of them are political this way or that way, you're gonna disagree. I, I meant to write it as a resource so you could, it would at least stimulate your thinking about what would a golden civilization look like and how could we get at it right away? Let's not wait a thousand years. Let's get at it. Let's make it happen. So, so I wrote it to challenge people to stimulate your thinking. But then I thought, well, if we set up a, a conversation where people can have it over their dining room table with their family, their extended family, they could do it at the senior center, they could do it in, high, in their grade school, in their uh, primary school, in their university, uh, they could do it at places of work or, or community places. And we set it up so that instead of it being my ideas, it's your ideas. Let, let's make a golden civilization. What's your idea of a golden civilization? And then what's, what's stopping us? Let's get going at it. And there, what's wonderful, one of the, the major thing that comes up, Justin, it's been so interesting. It's not about the politics. I've been surprised. I mean, it is about the politics. But the first thing that comes up is greed and fear for most people. And, uh, and one of the major actions that people want to take is they want to be better listeners and they want to be kinder. They want to be more generous of spirit. And gosh, well, well just if, if you just think if everybody was a better listener and was kinder, we'd probably be there. Yeah. <laughs> we were. Yeah. And from my aspect, you know, if we were all living um, purposeful, fulfilling lives, we would be kinder, we would be more generous, we w there would be more community, there would be more caring, and then the, the, the issues of the world would probably kind of drop away because if, if everyone is living those kind of lives, then there'll be, there would, the, just a natural effect would be less conflict and less anger, and less, possibly less ego, ego in the negative word rather than the positive. Yeah, so uh, you, from, from my perspective, if we can, if we can harness this, the tools that you have in this book and have these conversations, and people can live, they, they live lives that they are inspired by or are inspiring everyone else, the world would be, um, well, we, we would be a, be a better place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, as, you're, as you're talking about it, it, it would be a, a smaller segment of your audience, but the subtitle of the book is The Map of Mindfulness. And one of the ways that people are now, I mean, it's now getting, it's in the primary school, they brought it into the Houses of Parliament, it's happening in corporations all over the world. Um, one of the ways to actually train the mind, tame the mind, make it less self-oriented and all, is the practice of, of mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know it's a, it's a concept that you introduced me to uh, 10 years ago. Um, I felt a bit shocked by the whole uh, <laughs> sitting quietly, <laughs> just observing my feelings and uh, letting my thoughts go. But yes, so uh, 10 years in, I'm, um, I'm still not as, 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 uh, uh, as a guru as you are in that, <laughs> in that manner, but I, I still uh, have a daily practice. So um, uh, you, you sh it, it shows, Justin. I mean, in my experience of you just right now is uh, uh, there's a piece inside of you that wasn't, wasn't there as much 10 years ago. Uh, sure. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, George, you know, it's been fascinating chatting to you. Um, I thank you for your time to, to, you know, your busy schedule in London. And I know you've got a big book tour going on and lots of these golden conversations. And you're going to be flying around the world delivering this stuff. Uh, we'll put the, we'll, in the show notes, we'll put some links to um, all of your books, um, Seven Stages of Money Maturity and Life Planning for You and uh, Lighting the Torch, which I don't think you can get actually any longer. And obviously your latest Golden Civilization. I think I've probably covered them all, hopefully. Um, and, oh, sorry. Well, there's, um, uh, there's a meditation book, of course. And, um, and of course, there's a beautiful book of your photography um, the, uh, from, from Hawaii, so from Hana. So, um uh, we'll put the links to that and then um, obviously to the Kinder Institute, which is a global organization that I know um, 
Uh, obviously, you head up, but they have a big team in the States uh, looking after for you. So we'll put the notes in there if anyone wants to find out more information. And I know there are other advisors who um, do listen into the podcast, which is uh, very grateful for. And if they want to, well, they can, if they want to know about the training, etc., obviously, they can contact myself or, or the Kinder Institute to find out the, some of the training courses that you run. But I wish you all the success with the book. I think it's a, you know, it's a fantastic ideal. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you and 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 reading the information and 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 learning a lot from you because you've been very influential in in my thinking. So um, once again, thanks for taking the time to to join me this morning, George. Great, thank you, Justin. So that wraps up another episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast brought to you by MFP Wealth Management. To continue the conversation about topics we've discussed on the podcast, please search for the Retirement Cafe page on Facebook and follow us. And if you've enjoyed this conversation, please leave a review on iTunes or share with your friends and family that you may think also might enjoy the podcast. So until next time, this is Justin King helping you feel more informed in your retirement.